Hello, Kevin, Calvin, how are you guys? Hi, Dr. T, you're good. How are you? Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Hey, girl, what's up? <laughs> That's Calvin. <laughs> they don't need it, to be honest. Do they, 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 they need it? Oh, God. Let me see. Tell them everything in the seminar module. That's, they, these people, they don't like watch the seminar, okay? Because everything that they have to like, um, what was that? that? They have to like uh, get like all the files that they need, it's in the seminar module. This is that 120s thing is weird. Yeah, because it's attached to their lab manual. If they know how to like read and like download it, <laughs> it would be there. Just tell them like everything's in seminar. Seminar, right? Yeah, uh huh. That's why I told it. Like. Are you, are you like, where are you right now? Are you, which one is your seminar one? Oh, I'm a terrible right now. Let me see. Why is my download? I downloaded Your, your mic's on. <laughs> it's cool how you kind of transitioned into it, you know? Are you? <laughs> you know, he was, First he was talking to me, and then just sort of like, he's talking to this other person. <laughs> oh, God. How you doing, Calvin? I'm good, Dr. T. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so, no, no. I, I, I love you so much. You get, <laughs> you, 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 uh, you make life so much richer. You know, because <laughs> there's all these cool ways to interact with. Anyways, shut up, Roger. Okay. Uh, okay, Leslie's here. Kenya's here. I'm um, here. No, you're not, Kenya. I know you're not here. It's okay. Ah, oh, cool. Okay. I see Ivy today. Yay. And Aditya, how are you doing, bud? Excellent well. day. All righty, all righty. I'm going to see who else wants to share their image. That would be cool. <laughs> Not Pauline. Is Pauline working on her phone tonight? Hi, Dr. T. I'm uh, dealing with some emergency stuff, so... Emergency? Oh no! I, I oh. sent you a text like an hour ago. <laughs> oh, oh! I I never. You know, my my. I turned off text at one point in time, and I can never be. I have never not figured out how to turn it back on. So, I'm not getting texts, or I I'm not getting notified of them anyway. So. Got it. So, okay. Well, um, all right. Dan, are you good tonight? I am, but my camera isn't. I could restart if you want. Oh, come on. Don't throw your dilemma on me. I don't know what you should do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get people to turn their stupid cameras on, but I don't really care. Okay. Uh, he, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, excellent. So, um, so uh, how, uh, how should I address you? Like, should I call you he or should I call you, how should I do that? Uh, you can call me he Kun. He Kun, yeah. excellent. So, but in Korean, right, um, do you usually use the third name as like, would someone say, hey Cho, if they were speaking Korean to you? Uh, no, they just call me uh, Hikun, but in a uh, oh, okay. Korean accent, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that part. <laughs> yeah. But it's pretty easy. It's not that hard. 
Oh, really? Yeah, yeah okay. it's, it's similar okay. to my English name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay, I, I think I got off a little bit of a different tangent there for a second. But, yeah. Uh, that's all right. All righty. So, Richard, how are you doing tonight? Doing very well. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. You're, uh, oh, you're either white or you're black. There, there you are. are. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Figuring out this new camera. Awesome. A new camera. I love it. My, my, the webcam I'm using is at least 10 years old. That's still pretty new. Yeah, that's pretty new. Ah, Dan is back with us in Kenya. And Kai, how's Kai doing? I've always been here. Sorry, Kenya. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> how's it going, Kai? You doing good? Fantastic. Hey. So, um, all right, Leslie, how are you doing? Doing well, how about you? I'm good, I'm good. Just checking in with everybody. Um, uh, uh, Lily? Hi. Hi, Lily. How's it going? Good, 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 good. Um, so, uh, how about you, Carla? How are you doing? I'm good. I have my camera off because I was in lab all day and I didn't get to eat and I didn't want to be distracting on camera. <laughs> Oh no no that's all right. I completely understand. I um I would just have I would give myself a a, a He-Man avatar that like like talked like me and everything if I could. But I just I technically it's impossible for me to make that happen. Maybe Zoom will come out with a an app to let you do that or something. I know. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh. It'd be like an AI, and I could say, I want to be Brad Pitt, you know? And it would like <laughs> kind of superimpose all of your emotions onto a picture of Brad Pitt. That'd be terrifying. That is our Chem 250 future uh, preview, right? So we got to write that down. That, that, well, what, at what, when will that type of AI be available to the public? I think they have stuff that you can do that with, but just not integrated into like Zoom because they have those Apple like faces. No kidding, Apple has that. They're, well, they're like cute like uh, animal faces and like emojis. Oh, faces. right, right, right. Animated faces, right, 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 right. But you can do stuff um, with these uh, uh, deep fake programs that are just wild. So anyway, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, um, now that I have everyone's attention except mine, uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, uh, well, first of all, um, I have already, or I will put, um, actually I have already, uh, some reading material onto Canvas for y'all. And, um, uh, that includes uh, this, it's a PDF paper on fluorescence. And it's called uh, Skoog 6 edition fluorescence. And uh, that, that's good reading. Um, so uh, if you want, you can go back and read that. Um, and then, uh, and then where we where we left off, I think, was uh, we start we started intimate about the smiles paper. But I basically just wanted to reboot everything, so I uploaded this uh, molecular spectroscopy paper. And um, so uh, where we got with this, I think, puts us in a position to start answering these questions here. And these questions are also on canvas somewhere. I'll just open them up. Yay, so here's our, this is our homework for everybody. And um, 
we make this large enough or not so tiny that we can't see it. And um, so the first question to answer is to explain the difference between an excitation and an emission spectrum. And uh, to try to explain which looks more like an absorption spectrum and why. So I think that Aditya is up answering this question. I'm not sure? Not sure. <laughs> not sure. It's hard to put it into words, isn't it? Especially like right, right in the moment. But um, uh, excitation. So there, uh, what are the what are the two modes that we do fluorescence in? There's um, excitation and emission, right? Um, but um, in the excitation emission corresponds to uh, two different spectrometers. So in an excitation spectrum, the excitation uh, frequency is scanned. And to, if you scan the excitation frequency, then you are looking for all the levels at which you can photonically channel energy into the molecule and retrieve it at a certain frequency, one frequency. So um, the excitation, you choose one wavelength, it's longer than the others, and you scan the excitation frequency. Does that make sense? Is that for fluorescence excitation that you take one wavelength and then measure the excitation? Yes, exactly. So, um, so the floor, the excitation spectrum is kind of like all the ways you can get energy into the molecule using light. And the emission spectrum is uh, all of the different molecular states that can uh, relax down and, and emit light given a, a sufficient excitation. I don't know if, you know, it took me so long to get that thought out. I don't even know if it makes sense anymore. But, um, uh, so if I have the EX citation spectrometer, So this, this, this first guy up here is what type of spectrometer? Excitation or emission? Uh, that's excitation. Yep. Excellent. And the second one down here is what type? Emission. Emission. So, um, which one of these two will look more like an absorption spectrum? Uh, 
Is it like the excitation? Ah, uh, yes. And how did you learn this, Calvin? Did you, as the words left my lips, did you Google them? I guess remember it from PCAM. <laughs> <laughs> Good, excellent. <laughs> From PCAM, <laughs> not 155. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Which he took with me this last spring, right? No, I took it like a year and a half ago. And, oh my God, it's been so oh, long. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. Oh my gosh, that's right. But um, <clears throat> yes, you learn these things in PCAM. Um, Dr. Terrell, is it because the other one is non-radiative? Um, oh, just kind of close, just like almost like right, but not quite right. <laughs> Who can get me a little bit closer to the answer to the question? Which one looks more like an absorption spectrum and why? The emphasis being So, um, so Kenya, um, if you put, uh, if you scan an absorption spectrum of a molecule, what? molecular properties are you observing as the wavelength changes and the absorption produces a peak? Um, optical properties. Yeah, excellent, optical properties. That's the optical properties of solids and molecules and uh, materials uh, so called metrology. Um, but, uh, the uh, but what um, what what properties described in the quantum world? Maybe that's one way to put it. So, like what? light being absorbed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What 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 molecular property? What quantum molecular property is that uh, exploration exploit about a, uh, about a molecule? Sorry, it's a little bit tangled up. Um, energy. Energy, yeah. But, uh, but what? But all spectra have energy on, on an x-axis. Energy either as, um, uh, say, wave numbers or electron volts or one over energy, which is wavelength in nanometers, right? So what, um, uh, what, part of a, uh, what quantum property of an atom or molecule uh, are you exploring when, when you do an electronic absorption measurement? Is it the vibrational mode? You know, that is really interesting because that's, um, that is, it's not what I was thinking. But it's true, it could be a vibrational mode. But, um, but what's, what else is there besides vibrational modes? I'm gonna take a huge guess here. Yeah. Um, is it the transition dipole stuff? 
Well, not quite. That's actually a little bit advanced relative to uh, what we're describing right now. Like if you do an electronic absorption uh, measurement on you know, molecule A or A, what quantum property do the peaks on that uh, represent? And by quantum, um, I mean, uh, in, in, the, in the Schrodinger sense, where, I mean, what, what quantum mechanical uh, solutions do we have to what we're what we're measuring, that electronic absorption. Um, are you getting at that these are discrete energy levels? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. And what how what do we call those energy levels? Energy states. Energy states. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And what's an example of an energy state for, a, for an atom, an ion, or a molecule? Uh, ground state? Yeah, exactly. There's a ground state. And then uh, what else is there? Ground and? Excited. Ground and excited states. Exactly, exactly. So, um, um, I forgot what I was talking about. Is this chemistry class? No, we're in culinary. Oh, jeesh, my pasta, my pasta is burning. <laughs> okay, so you guys got the idea more or less, right? When I say a quantum state, I'm talking about, a, you know, a S0 or S1 state, um, and these are electronic energy states. And, you know, uh, their quantum numbers can include um, uh, uh, principal electronic quantum number. Um, uh, you know, there's um, uh, all of the uh, M sub L, M sub S, and spinning all those quantum numbers, right? given state has all the quantum numbers fixed, right? Could be a sigma, you know, 1s with, you know, spin zero, whatever, I don't know. But um, uh, the, those, those levels are, are, they include all of the other motions so that you could have, that's an electronic description. And then you can also have a vibrational description. Um, and a rotational description. You know, there's other descriptions you can have. <clears throat> but um, so, um, oh goodness. Gotta check my battery here. I plugged it in, but it does not seem to be lacking the power number. Uh oh. Okay, I might have to actually get back to y'all. Ah, okay. Whew. I think I got it charging again. <laughs> ah, <clears throat> sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, so uh, the, the fluorescence of, or the absorption, these are all looking at the a different, uh, different potential energy states of a molecule, right? So um, uh, how do I change, what, what changes when a molecule's state changes? What do I mean by that? Is it the distance of the outermost electrons from the nucleus? That is fucking brilliant. 
That is a brilliant answer. Because that is completely true. Absolutely true. So there's more to the story, of course, right? Because a state uh, has all, all, of, all of the electron quantum numbers fixed, you know? So um, in any given molecule, you, let's say you have I don't know, 16 electrons or something like that. And each of these different electrons will have a set of uh, maybe five or six quantum numbers. And you just, you just fill in every, every state there, right? You use the alpha principle and you build up your picture of the molecule. <clears throat> and, um, and that's, so between, uh, when, when you fill a state, for example, um, let me get my, thingy here. When you fill a state, you might have these four different, you know, um, uh, actually it would have been more convenient to make three, but let's, let's say these are, um, these are energy states. And so, um, uh, these all, all these four states belong to the same energy level. Right, and so they'll probably fill something like this, right? And then there there could be vacant states up here. Right? So here's here's filled states, empty states. And overall, these really these are substates. Uh, these are substates of uh, a um, a superstate or or an optically accessible state, uh, which I would have a capital letter S like that. So um, let's say that we call this state S zero. Now, what would S1 look like? What would S1 look like? How could I fill in the remainder of the electrons for S1? Ivy, how, how, how could, um, if I have, uh, this is my S0 state, this is my ground state, or lowest total potential energy uh, state, then and I said, well, this is one possibility to have these um, eight electrons in any one of these, uh, 16 orbitals, right? They say, well, this, this is what we call the ground state because all the electrons are in their lowest um, orbitals that they can be. But um, what's another way that I could distribute these electronic spins on a, on a uh, graph uh, which we'll describe as S1 here? So here's the... Um, we could call this the sigma and the sigma star. This guy might be sigma, sigma star. What's another way that I can put the remaining electrons into S1? Could you do uh, one electron per little um, tab thingy? Mm-hmm. Well, you saying just like this? No, those are paired, right? So maybe like a lone lone electron on each. On 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 each what? Each line. What what, what is the so, little? Mm -hmm. 
on that one energy level. Yeah. Because so the uh, dark mm -hmm. one kind of like a different state than the one that doesn't have a star. Like this is the star is the excited state, right? Mm, yeah. Well, there's um, uh, right. That's a good point. Um, well, uh, whether you know, irrespective of the etymology of the sigma or the s, um, uh, you know. This uh, this total electronic energy uh, electronic configuration is um, what we're trying to do is just re represent it down here same number of electrons etc and we're going to call this new state the upper state right and so how how would these spins go in there would they go be going one two three four five six seven Five, six, seven, eight, like that. Would that be S one? So, do you mean like making it diatomic or polyatomic? Uh, yeah, this is this is uh, already uh, like when you talk about uh, actually, this could actually just be a, an atom, or it could be a molecule, or it could have um, almost. You know, the exact quantum numbers I haven't specified, although I did say sigma, and sigma is the molecular uh, term for, an, there, there's a, a, an equivalence between sigma orbitals and, and s orbitals that we are familiar with from atomic spec, right? Um, so, um, Uh, I'm just sort of like, I should not have put any electrons in down here because I gave you, I already gave away half of the game, right? So, so where should I put, let's say I just keep going in the same way I was going up, down, up, down, and I go up, down, up. And then I go, I'm going to go down here, but I can't because if I go down here, then it'll be identical, right? So I have to make my next down spin maybe up here. We could call that S1, right? Just a different electronic configuration, right? So um, now, uh, <clears throat> Aditya mentioned earlier that there's also a vibrational component, and there is. So um, every electronic level has an associated set of vibrational levels. So S0, and, and then um, S0, V, uh, prime zero, and then there's S zero V prime one, S zero V prime two, et cetera. Dr. Chair. Yeah, oh, I got off. Yeah, I got to move the paper here, don't I? Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, that's only for molecules, right? Can you have a vibrational state as just an atom? Uh, no, you cannot. There's two reasons you can't. <laughs> One is that you can't even, uh, uh, that vibrations are uh, motions of nuclei, right? So an atom can't have a vibrational state in that sense. And then the other reason is that um, uh, anyway, forget it. I forgot what the other reason was. <laughs> okay, let's keep going here. Pauline, how are you doing? I'm okay. 
okay? You're not making any contributions. My gosh, I feel abandoned. That's why I texted you an hour ago. Oh no, I have to read my texts. Jesus. Ah. I'm just, I hope I'm just dealing with an emergency over here, so I'm trying to listen, but I also have to. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, you know, I trust me. I feel for you, but I just have no idea what it might be. You know. So um. All right. So Pauline is completely off the hook. Not going to ask her any more questions. Does anybody else have any emergencies they'd like to notify me about? Kai, no emergency for you? Not that I know of, no. No? Okay. Yeah. Is, your, um, is your house on fire maybe, or? I, I don't think so now. Okay, all right. Um, I just wanted to make sure because, you know, if you, you know, you can get out of answering any more questions, you just have to declare an emergency. Uh, I got nothing. You got nothing. You're not. Gonna, you're not. De you're not going to declare an emergency. Rude, Doctor T. Rude. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Kenya and Kai just switched places on my screen too. I think there's something going on there. All right. So, um, the answer to my question from long, long ago is that when you do an electronic spectrum of a molecule, emission, absorption, whatever, you're looking at the electronic topology of the molecule. You know, you're looking at the electronic states available uh, to that molecule through the absorption of um, infrared radiation, right? And um, so uh, through the absorption of any kind of radiation, sorry, not infrared, but any kind of radiation, but um, so that, that's what absorption does. It looks at the electronic uh, uh, topography of the molecule, and they're always that what you see in the spectrum is always a difference in energy levels, right? So. Um, uh, I think these are double primes. Oops. These are primes. So um, let's say you were um, a molecule and you had, you were in this state here, right? And this state corresponds to a zillion different little energy levels and they're all filled up in a, in a particular way, right? And the mo motions of the molecule are all, are all a certain way, right? And a photon of light comes in and it interacts with you. What are some of the possibilities in terms of transitioning from state S0, V0? What are, what are some of the things that can store potential energy in this molecule? What are some of the other ways that that molecule can um, uh, maybe just take energy from its environment? What, what's available to it? I could use a photon. Yeah, you could totally absorb a photon, exactly. Right. And so you would you could go from this condition here to what? Uh, you could uh, get rid of an electron, right? Uh, you could ionize it, but you would be cheating. No ionization. My goodness. Ah, 
I, I did I not explicitly forbid ionization at the beginning of this class? My goodness, Kenya. How dare you suggest an ionization? <laughs> <laughs> Kenya's gone. Pauline's gone. Calvin's gone. Who's going next? <laughs> I'm still kind of here. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin's back. <laughs> okay. If it's not ionization, then what is it? You, you, you put a photon in and you're gonna move some charge around, baby. You're gonna move charge, because that's what you do. This photon comes in, it moves charge, and that charge can either be turned into motion of the nuclei, as in rotations and vibrations, or that, that, that can go into uh, changing the states the electrons, they're, they're equivalent to vibrational motion, right? So if we put in a, a, an ultraviolet photon, this to a, a, a molecule in state S0 V double prime zero, how can I represent that in this uh, set of uh, depictions here? That, it could be uh, a line all the way up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, it's gonna be a line. It's gonna start here, right? And that's gonna go up, right? And how high is it gonna go? to the next state. To exactly here. Is that the only option? What, what else is possible? How about right here? Is that possible? Only if you start from a different and or different vibrational state. Oh come on, Dan! You can't start from a different place. You're ionizing molecules. You're starting them in different places. You guys right. are crazy. The quantum mechanics says no states in the middle. <laughs> there ain't no state. <laughs> you cannot do that, man. That is forbidden. Forbidden, I tell you. It's forbidden. Okay. I, I, I thought you said you can go or like change state. You can have motion or rotation or you can change state. Yes. So then yes. is it S1, V, 0? Isn't that the, the next state? This? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So you can, you can go here. I'm just sort of emphasizing something. I don't know what I'm doing. Probably um, trying to have a conversation. The geekiest, nerdiest, weirdest conversation of your life. We're having a conversation about quantum chemistry. Are we or are we not having a conversation about quantum chemistry, Carla? We are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought we were making pasta. Me? Uh, Pauline, you're a little bit late to that. We're, we moved on from culinary to chemistry. Oops. Is that from like this week? Or where did, where did she pull that out? Oh my gosh. That was from the <laughs> Zoom call. It was like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm sorry. I'm nerding out here, guys. My nerd circuits are exploding. So, um, so long story short, you can change uh, 
this molecule state, if you have a photon of exactly the right energy to match the difference in energy between those two states, And um, the probability that that happens is given by psi r psi star. Uh, integral over d e tau, where um, this is the S0 state. This is the S1 state. R is the uh, uh, the distance between the loci of charge And um, the distance between the loci of charges in those two states. And this, this operator R gives you the probability of uh, uh, light being able to drive a transition between the ground state into that state. My son just brought a pizza home, pizza home like he was a, like a T-Rex running home from a, a hunt. There'll be pizza flying everywhere. It's going to be a mess. Oh, God. I don't want to go out there anymore. And old turd. He, he comes in. He, he went in the, in the back way here. Came in through the he, he came in. That's the alley behind my house, and that's looking out towards Camden Avenue. And he comes in this thing, and he goes up to the window, and he torments me with pizza, knowing how much I love it. <sighs> Kill that kid. I'm not going to kill my kid, trust me. <clears throat> okay, so um, do we know what we're talking about when we're talking about state transitions now, basically? All that, all them quantum numbers and all them wiggly, squiggly, shapely things where all the electron uh, probability contours are and all that good stuff. It's when them things change. That's what we're talking about. And not only this, the, the squiggly things you see, but also the, um, the way that they vibrate and the way that they rotate. And you know, I have to confess that I could buy almost any of this shit. But when they told me that a rotating object, when you're in that, level of fucking unreality is not even a rotating object. I was like, what the fuck are we talking about then? You know, because that is just so strange. Like, what frequency is it? No, there's no frequency, you idiot. It's something else. And it's like, uh, Donald, I mean, Donald McQuarrie, I hate you, whoever you were. But um, so 
so yeah it's all that stuff and um uh you can do this the transition dipole moment operator trick on it and you can almost always um get away with sounding like you know what you're talking about but um but basically the transition dipole moment Um, can be solved using symmetry. So, um, for example, if you take a couple of uh, harmonic oscillator solutions, it might look like Dr. Terrell, can you move the paper up, please? Uh, sorry. How long was it up there? How long was it off screen? Maybe 10 minutes? No, but thank you. <laughs> sorry. Thank you. OK, so um, so there's there's uh, there's a uh, this could be a size zero there, right? Where this is, um, this is the potential energy E of the harmonic oscillator at position R minus R zero. And this axis here is R minus R zero. So, and R minus R zero is maximum at R equals R zero. That's sort of like the equilibrium length, length of the spring. And then as it compresses um, or expands, uh, it creates this uh, harmonic potential well. So um, the uh, zero state vibration of this molecule, that is the lowest energy state, has a maximum probability of uh, being at any point in time at R equals R zero. But then um, at, uh, if you excite this, you can, you can add just a small quantum of energy to this guy. <clears throat> you can excite it to that state. And um, the reason that you can do this with light, the reason you can make this transition with light is because when you integrate psi, whatever operator, psi star here, this integral is gonna be odd, which means, um, Uh, negative um, positive or hold on just one second. Dr. Terrell, can you move the paper up? Oh, sorry. Thank you. I'm back at it again with the off screen notes. Oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think. I think my wife and my uh, son are going to kill kill each other out there. So it should should be interesting. Um, if you see a, a hatchet fly in and stick into my head, 
um, call 911 and tell them, this guy died on Zoom. How do we know where to send them? <laughs> no, you just say, ah, ah. <laughs> Oh God. So, um, you know, I don't know what odd means. Um, it means that the integral, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, odd means that um, if it's negative, um, negative is not, uh, it's not equal to positive. That's this, this asymmetry around the uh, around this axis, right? So, if we're negative, we're positive, and we're, and if we're positive, we're negative, right? In this case, that's like a p orbital, right? One half is negative, and the other half is positive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. They look a little bit different on the extreme, but they're very similar. Very similar. Um, however, the um, yeah, there's different, obviously, because a p orbital is an electronic state. And what I'm describing here are actually vib vibrational states. You see, he's trying to trick me up here. He's trying to he's trying to trick me into saying something stupid. But why would he try? <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. So, um... <laughs> So yeah, where was I? Um, so yeah, when, when this uh, this being odd means that uh, the uh, integral over these two states is non-zero. So um, if uh, so, it'll be like um, when I, I multiply the two states together and add them up, uh, that product is uh, uh, non-zero. So this is, you know, this means this is that means that um, this is allowed and this means forbidden. So um, for an allowed, uh, you know, there's actually a third level up here and I can, let me move up here again. That third level looks like that. But all the amplitude is always positive. Right? So <clears throat> basically, this is positive and negative down here, and it's zero. And then here. Positive, zero, and negative as well. So this goes, um, this is plus, minus, plus, and this is plus, minus, plus, or it's plus, minus. And this is all the same sign. These two are all the same signs. But this this uh, function changes so This is f of x. 
Sorry, that was an unfortunate. F x equals minus plus f of minus x. And this is f of x equals minus f of minus x. So, <clears throat> this is odd, this is even. So, going back to our story way back here. Um, the difference between this state and, and this state here is what? What, how do these, how do these two states differ? The, uh, the lower state and the upper state. Adam? You mean different terms of the quantum value, like just energy or something more specific? Well, yeah, S, I see. Um, uh, there was two ways to interpret what I, how I asked that question. So, um, Each of these two states, if occupied, corresponds in reality to um, a set of electrons with a set of quantum numbers, right? <clears throat> set of electrons and nuclei and it, electrons, nuclear positions and quantum numbers. You know, like the nuclear positions say, okay, well, this is a molecule with this average structure, right? And then the, the um, electronic states contribute to the energy of that system. So, um, uh, how um, these two states differ in just in, in a very simple way. And uh, how many how many substates are involved in the difference between this state and this state? Is it three? Uh, it's either three or one because. Um, there's, um, if you describe every, if you describe every quantum state as a, as a line, which can be populated with two opposing spin electrons, right? then um, I think I'm just gonna, um, waiter. I'd like a gin and tonic, please. I feel my gin and tonic coming. It's almost 7.15. And I really need it now. You guys have no idea 
what it's like having to entertain your little butts for 50 minutes every Tuesday. <laughs> Kai? Yes. So how are you, how are you doing, buddy? First of all, just how are you doing? Uh, I didn't have to get evacuated, so that's right. <laughs> Oh, wow. Again? Jeez. Ah. That's what, where, where, whereabouts do you live? Oh, uh, I live by the SCU complex fire. But it's the, the okay. place that did get evacuated. They are allowed to come back. So I'm pretty sure I'm safe now. So that's a good oh, thing. Oh, God. Sheesh. And I can open my window without smelling ash and smoke. So that's. Oh. Awesome. Oh my god! Oh my god! Uh, it it was friggin' up. Ash also, Kai. Huh? Did your car get also covered in ash? Yeah, it like it got covered in ash, and then we had that weird thunderstorm. So then I just didn't wash it or do anything because I'm like it's just gonna get dirty again anyways. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I, I live like five minutes from Kai, so. Oh my Same. god! Same thing. Oh my god! 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 Yeah, I live by by Mount Hamilton, so it was bad for a few days, oh, but it's right. better now. <laughs> oh gosh, it's a lot better now. Yeah, it's oh a lot. Oh my gosh! Better. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <clears throat> the fire is seventy percent contained now. Oh jeez, that is scary, man. Think of that. I don't know why. It's just like I'm not. <clears throat> my house isn't. There's like major like freeways running all around my house. We actually live in a, in, a, in a small encampment under Highway 17 near the 280 interchange. I'm just jumping around. I don't live there. Um, <laughs> you disappeared. Hold on. What were you saying? Dr. T, the fire uh, last year that was in Malibu, like, jumped the 101, so that you're not exactly uh, <laughs> immune. Oh, God. Oh, my God. You know, it's so funny um, because uh, um, uh, I, uh, um, I, I feel like I'm so insular here, but can you imagine... You know, like living my work, Kai or Pauline does, and it's like, man, there could be a wildfire and just flatten everything. Jeez. That blows my mind. And, and it, it, it's a real age thing for me, too. Because um, back when I was young and like, I wasn't really attached to a place, it's like, oh, I don't care if my house burns down. I'm just going to run away. I'm happy to go join the merchant marines or, you know. <laughs> you know, but now I'm, like, getting older. I'm, like, I got this house. I got to hang on to this puppy, man. It's, like, um, um, half of a duplex. And it's, like, all I can do just hold on to this place. <laughs> Things are so expensive now, man. Isn't it crazy? But, um. Yeah. Yeah. In college, I had, a, I had an apartment that I rented a four bedroom, $850 for four bedrooms. Where'd you live? Chico. Uh, oh, I was going to think. <laughs> okay. I was thinking. Eight fifty per bedroom is that possible? You look pretty no, good. Eight fifty. He meant low. all four were only eight fifty. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Carroll, my yes. mom lives in Cleveland, and they have a house, and they rent it for eight hundred dollars a month, and it's four bedrooms. Oh, wow! In I know. Cleveland, I was like, huh? that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, oh, geez. I don't know. It's been. Thank God. It's been a while, but see, my my wife almost caught me with my pants down here. I gotta tell you this. A funny thing happened in our relationship around 2008 or so, which was that we were just boyfriend and girlfriend at that point, right? 
and she decides to buy a house, right? And I'm like, oh shit, I can't do that, right? And, I, and I'm like, oh, do you want to go in on it? You know, something like that. It's like, no, my house. <laughs> so, um, you know, there was there was a good like eight years there where I was living with her and her mom and then her, her mom and her dad at the time and her, her son and her brother. And it was a full house, right? But um, just a couple of years ago, we got married. So I don't, I'm not worried about that anymore. I didn't get, I didn't like, you know, she had to milk me a little bit dry to get that down payment together too. That was a, sort of a squeezing action there. Ah, sheesh. Now I've got a, I've got my own half duplex. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> One day I may leave it to my son. <laughs> Unless a strong wind comes and blows it down. <laughs> or a fire. Or, an or a fire, exactly. <laughs> ah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yes, honey. Come here, babe. Come on. Oh, come on, honey. Oh, she was going to come at just the right moment, too. Oh, just after the real estate story. Ah. <laughs> I'll get her to come in here one of these times and she'll be on camera. We can meet each other. I promise. But but if, if if you guys have any advice for me to how to be how to be more alluring so she'll come in or more convincing, like maybe oh say oh look at this on my computer, Mitra, you know something like that, a little ruse that I could get her to come on camera. You guys have any ideas for me? Does she, like she doesn't know you're not on camera or you're on camera. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll have to be a time. I'll say, oh no, we're all done, right? Cat video. I can have a cat video. <gasps> brilliant, brilliant, Adam. Except, oh God, that would be brilliant. But it's, she hates cats. She hates them like they're cockroaches, giant, you know, 15 pound cockroaches or something. She hates them so badly. Dog video? Dog video? Yeah. <laughs> Dog video. <laughs> that would probably work. Dogs are maybe. What, what else is cute? Little Have humans. Seen a chinchilla take a, a chinchilla take a sand bath? Ah, I'll check that. I'm going to check that one. I'm going to check. What, what, what? Chinchilla takes a sand bath. I was yeah. Gonna, I was thinking chinchilla takes a chan bath. No. That's not right. <laughs> okay, you guys. I'm out of here, man. Uh, this is the weirdest teaching day I've ever had in my entire life. It's all your fault. Are you over us, Dr. T? I'm so... No, not really. It's only Tuesday. <laughs> what? No, hey, no, Dr. Me... Carol, you, you've dealt with us for a couple of semesters now. Or, uh, I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I love you guys. The video, <laughs> the sorry, the music from the chinchilla video. It's so dramatic. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm going to lure her in one of these days. And that is the most brilliant suggestion. Just have a cute movie playing. Ah. All righty. Okay, guys. I'm gone. I'm out of here. Wait, how do I end it? Uh, and drink. And meeting for all.